Hi guys, James here from PlumberParts.co.uk. Today we're going to be looking at how to improve water mains pressure if you've got like one 15 mil main coming into the house and every time you open up multiple outlets the pressure just drops and drops and drops or if you've got a really annoying combi boiler as well. We're going to install a Stuart Turner mains boost vessel on this system here to demonstrate how they can improve the pressure of your systems at home. I'll show you the features of the upstream valve kit, how to connect to the vessel itself, how to use a Stuart Turner test kit to find out if you actually need a vessel. By the way, you can buy the test kit and all the tools that we use in this video on our Amazon store. And finally performing that test and installing a new vessel in my own home and showing you how much more improved my system is. Remember to hit the subscribe button and remember to hold tight. Also learn more about the plumbing in your home using our interactive house. And if you're looking for a plumber to do this work for you, pop over to our website and search Find Your Plumber. So what do these vessels actually do? You've probably seen something like this maybe in your home, or if you're an apprentice out on site, you might have seen these in plant rooms before. And it's very difficult sometimes to think, well, what's inside this bulbous thing? And why is it helping the water pressure on my home? Or if you're someone who's thinking about installing this, or you've got this problem in your home, how is this bulbous thing here gonna help fix that problem? Well, check this out. For this installation, we have a 15 millimeter main which has good pressure, but poor flow, which goes through the monoblock upstream connection, which is the latest innovation from Stuart Turner on this type of system. And we'll talk about that in a minute, and then can be increased in size up to 22 and 28 millimeter. We set our upstream pressure at three bar. We can now tee into the bottom of our mains boost. Inside, we have two separate areas, the water side and the air side, with an 100% virgin butyl diaphragm that's four millimeters thick, keeping the two apart. Mains water enters the water side via a diffuser to allow water to circulate within the water area of the mains boost. And mains pressure and water volume is gathered within the mains boost, locked and loaded for when you want to open a tap. On the air side, we have a pre-charge of 1.4 bar, but this pressure will change when we reach equilibrium between the water pressure and flow coming in and the air side later on, when they should both be about three bar each. Although this can change with requirements due to commissioning. These beasts can last from 10 to 15 years and do 70,000 cycles. So now when we open the hot or the cold tap, whereas before we only had one 15 millimeter main coming in, we now have a boosted 22 millimeter or 28 millimeter supply to all the outlets. These are also great at gathering extra pressure overnight in towns where you often find the water pressure is low during the day and higher at night. Although nightly increases in pressure need to be taken into account during commissioning. They're also great on combi boilers as well. So there you go, you can see there that what we're doing is we're gathering water, we're in a way gathering flow, we're gathering pressure, and that's all gonna be there locked and loaded, ready to be released into the system when you open up a tap. Now the good thing is, is where you can see we can have them in the vertical or horizontal configuration, and I'm gonna use the horizontal configuration that we've got just here to show you the connections underneath so you know how to install one. Right, so when we're installing one of these mains boosts, we need to think about protections for the system. Uh, and what I'm talking about is we don't want to let too much water pressure into the system. So we need to install a pressure regulating valve in. Also, once we've gathered all that pressure throughout the evening or whatever time of the day it may be, we don't want that pressure to go back into our mains. That's really bad as well. So we need to install a non-return valve. Also, it would help for us to know what's actually going on by having a couple of pressure gauges so we could see it. And also, obviously, we'd like to install our vessel onto the system with the appropriate valves and bits and pieces. So we've got an upstream kit here made by Stuart Turner. Now, usually what you get in an upstream kit like this, you'll get the valve and the connector. This goes into the bottom of the tank and there's the valve there. We've got a couple of gauges. We've got a strainer and non-return valve. And also we've got our pressure regulating valve and other gauge for that as well. This setup will soon become a thing of the past, but it's helpful for you to know what it does. On the left-hand side, we'd have the cold water main coming in, going through our strainer. Then it goes through our non-return valve with incoming pressure gauge on there. Then it will go through our pressure regulating valve, regulating the pressure down to three bar, and then off to the system and mains boost. Or at least this is how you used to have to do it because now Stuart Turner have come up with this beast here, all in one. So we've got our mains water coming in here. We've got our first gauge just there. We've got a strainer in the top here. We've got a non-return valve there. We've got our combination valve here. Then we've got our next gauge there. You might also notice that the pipe sizes for this are bigger. These are in 28 mil, but they've even thought of that. So if you don't want to go up into 28 mil, 
you've also got 28 mil to 22 reducers in here as well. How cool is that? So there you go, now it's all done and dusted. We've got our 22 mil in, we could have gone in in 28. But when I'm showing you the problem system that we're gonna be working on later on, and also actually my system at home, we've only got 15 millimeter copper coming in on our mains water pressure. So that means we're gonna have issues with flow, we might not have issues with pressure, but if you have issues with one or the other, it's gonna cause problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce this pipe down to 15 mil, pop a valve on it, because our water's gonna be coming in this way. Then as we know, we've got our first gauge for water pressure on our mains in, then we've got our strainer, then we've got our non-return valve in here, then we've got our pressure reducer, and then our reading to see what our pressure reducer is doing, and then off out to our system. It's easy to convert the mains boost over onto horizontal use. Just make sure you order the feet for it to sit on. And then once you pop the black collar off, you can then take the end shroud off as well. Usually use a bit of Loctite thread seal for this. Tighten these up with these lovely big old ox beasts. Also, did I forget to mention that all the tools I use in this video, including my toolboxes, my tool bags, everything, my soldering bag and soldering kit, you can buy on our Amazon store. Push this on like so, and then we can tighten this nut up and we're going out in 28 mil. You can change the orientation on this when it's in the horizontal position just by moving the whole thing. It's not gonna go anywhere once it's in those little cradles that you buy, especially for this type of installation. So now we're coming out in 28 mil. If we had loads of these in series, if you're putting these in a big set of flats or a big office block or something like that, then you could maybe go up in size, take that off to where they all get piped up together. Now, let me show you our studio-based problem. I'm going to erect a 22 mil piece of pipe work about four meters up into the air and along the way have about four, five or maybe six outlets going all the way up. Each one of those outlets is going to have a lovely valve on there as well. I'm going to solder all of this together and then at the bottom we're going to feed these from our 15mm outlet, effectively simulating the problem that I have in my own home. You may have noticed in your own home that if someone opens up the mains tap downstairs, you start to struggle to fill your bath up or have that shower. And that's what I'm going to show you in this setup. And I'm also going to show you how we're going to fix it. Right then, so my lovely contraption is built. As you can see, we've got a standard cold water main coming in in 50 millimeter plastic, which can happen in loads of houses throughout the country. Often you'll find it's hopefully in old, really thick walled copper that you're going to rip out and take to the scrapyard. That thick walled copper can get you some nice beers at the end of the week. Anyway, so what we've got, we've got our 15 mil coming in at the bottom here. Then we've got an outlet here, which is effectively demonstrating the outside tap outlet. So we could turn all these on now if you like, and we can actually see what sort of pressure we're getting out. But before we do that, a good thing to do, especially for the peace of mind of your customer, is to do a static and dynamic test of the water pressure that's currently in the system. And that's when these really handy test kits from Stuart Turner come in. The good thing is, is they'll do a static, then a dynamic test, all in one just up here, and then you can do a flow test afterwards to see what liters per minute you're gonna be getting. Let me show you how. So first things first, we attach our pressure tester to an outside outlet. So there are ad other adapters to this. And then once we've got that tightened up, let me just get that nipped up. It doesn't need to be too tight, because that's on rubber. We can then shut this, and then open this valve here, and we'll see a reading of our static pressure. If I open this now, you'll see so we've got a static pressure there of about four bar, which is really good actually, that's, that's nice to see. And it is just creeping up a little bit as well. It's quite a busy day and we're on an industrial estate, so there'll be a lot of people moving about. Now, we can also then get our dynamic pressure. To get a dynamic pressure, all we need to do is open up another tap on the system. And then take a reading down here below. And at the moment, that is reading a dynamic pressure of a measly half a bar. So I think that might be what our issue is here, we'll see. We can turn that back off and we'll watch the pressure coming up again. The next thing we can do is actually get a measurement of our flow rate. So I usually pop a bucket under here, make sure this is shut and this is open, and then if we look on this gauge here, we can open this up and then get a reading of what our flow rate is, which is currently about Currently about 22 litres a minute, which is pretty good actually. Let's open up all these outlets and see what actually happens. So, let me get my incredibly dangerous set of steps out. Scare the hell out of me. 
Right then, so bottom one on first. Got loads of pressure there, great. On here. Okay, not bad. Let's go up another floor. Oh dear. What about up here then? Do I even bother opening these ones up above us? Nothing there. And to prove that they are actually open, let me shut these. So then, we've definitely got an issue with water getting up to this tap up here if any of the others are open. If we've got this one open down here, we know that we're going to really reduce the chance of water getting up this pipe to feed any services that are further up in the house. Can we fix that problem by installing a Stuart Turner mains boost on this beast down here? Can we do that? Well, there's only one way to find out. idea for you as well with this sort of thing if you're going to be soldering near a really big old joint like that you kind of want to get that solder done first just away from it it's a good idea otherwise you're going to struggle to do it up we struggle you're going to struggle to get it warm enough so it'll actually run and also 28 needs a little bit of persuasion sometimes guys in a minute I will be installing one of these beasts in my own home on a proper system I just think it's really really important for you to see how these systems can be laid out right in front of you and what sort of difference this is gonna make plus I just love doing pipe work so much fun getting everything nicely soldered up looking good looking nice and clean and now I can show you the finished product uh, so what we're gonna do now is actually open this up and start charging our vessel up right here we go This is going to take a few minutes to fill up and be ready to use. But once it's there, we'll know it is because our pressure will start to gather on this top gauge here. Okay, and we'll know that we're there okay. Um, a few little things that I think it's probably a good idea to address. We've obviously got stored water here and people always get a little bit worried about Legionella. Always think that the problem with Legionella is the fact that you often have warm areas where water is. Legionella is not a problem with these. They also have a diffuser in the bottom that means when water is introduced and taken out, it will swill up all the water inside our vessel, which is a good thing because that means we don't get any sort of stagnant type water. There's no water that's standing all the time. It's always being used in and out as well. I remember I fitted this on a personal person's house with a combi boiler they had a 15 mil cold going up and then the cold teed off to the cold round the house and the top bit of the tea went into the hot water into the combi boiler to be heated up and taken out so what they'd effectively done is split one 15 mil feed so what I did I popped one of these in ran a 22 mil pipe all the way up teed off in 15 to the cold feed and away and then teed up to the 15 as well so then rather than splitting a 15 mil feed into two they're splitting a 22 mil feed into two and that made a massive difference to the flow that they had. Right then, so pretty sure we're charged up now. Let me just move my tools out of the way. <laughs> Get everything soaked. Moment of truth, guys. Moment of truth. We've got three bars static pretty much there now. Yeah, I mean, it's still filling a little bit. It's still a little bit going in, but I think we're pretty good. Right then, let's turn everything on. Bottom one, on. I've got to be quick. Top one, on. Look at that! Look at it! <laughs> Hallelujah, everybody!
By the way, that improvement is green energy. No pump involved in this setup and no electricity. Well, I think you'd agree that's pretty amazing, but the proof is in the pudding. Firstly, our static pressure now should only be three bar here. There we go, so that's just sticking at three bar. Happy with that. Now let's test our dynamic pressure. So let's open up another tap above and see if we get better than that half a bar that we had earlier. Hell yeah, look at that. We're nailing it at the moment. Sorry, I couldn't shoot it. Great. Our flow rate should be similar, to be honest. Let's have a look there. Okay, a lot better. Right then, guys, you've seen what this thing can do. I'm going to install it in my house now. Um, mate, that is mental. I, I didn't think, like we had, was it one, two, we had pretty much two and a half, not even that, did we? We've got, we had all the outlets going there. You've seen that these work. I've shown it in front of you. I know you can't see me very well because the light's not very good and all that sort of stuff, but you've seen it. You've seen that these work. I've shown you with and without it in the style of Bono and you've got it in front of you now. I mean, guys, how cool is that? So let's go and install this little beast down here in my loft. Uh, I'll show you a before and after flow rate and everything as well. We'll do those tests too. You've seen how much improved we are already. That's the great thing about having those little test kits. They're imperative when you're doing this sort of work to be able to not only ascertain that there might be a problem, but to also prove to your customer that there is one and that you fixed it afterwards. So let's go to my house and get this sorted. So then we are now back at my house here and obviously the first thing I'm going to do before I do any of this work is actually ascertain whether I need to put one of these in. So I've got my little test kit here, as you can see, all ready to go. I've got my gauge there and then the little test kit that I used earlier on. These little clamps are just easy removers for if you're going into a different bit of pipe to do your pressure test. So nice and simple, easy to use. So that can pop on like that. Always make sure that your gauge is facing upward. And now we can put it on to an outside tap, which really is the easiest way. Here we go. Right, so if that's shut, first thing we do is get our static pressure reading. So with this valve shut, we just open up this valve here. And there we go, oh, <laughs> right on the line. So we've got about four bar in there. So that's our static pressure. Now what I'll do is turn on the kitchen tap just next to us out of shop here to see what our dynamic pressure is. And because we have a very small expansion tank on the combination valve up in the loft, that is what's dropping out there. So we're getting about one bar static pressure, which I'd say for this system is quite low. In a minute, I'll show you why. And now we want to check our flow rate. So I've got a bucket just under here just now, and I will just open this up and see what our flow rate is. And that's a flow rate of about 20 litres. So from that test there, I would say that I'm not very happy with our dynamic pressure. Um, the flow rate's pretty good. I think that's gonna be improved once we install one of these. And I'm happy with the static pressure. It's above the threshold of two bar that we mentioned earlier on in the video. Remember, if it's below two bar, we'd have to install a pump on the upstream side of the vessel to pump it up to the pressure that we want. So now I know that installing one of these vessels is definitely gonna improve this system. Let's go and have a look and see where I'd actually install it. Just say that again. Did you hear that? The hot water just stopped coming through in the kitchen tap. Well, that will change once I fit in one of these, babe. No, look, come, look, there's hot water here. The thing is, if we open both of these up, it pinches flow from everything else because we don't have enough dynamic flow into the system. Right, I'm going to interview them at the end of all this and you can go, oh my God, how amazed am I? Right, so we're back up here again in my trusty loft. When you're sighting one of these tanks, you need to consider a couple of things. Now, they can get quite heavy when they're full of water, especially. So make sure that wherever you're going to sight them, if you're up in a loft, always try and sight them over a dividing wall downstairs. I know for a fact that we've actually got a dividing wall that goes right down here and that goes all the way downstairs as well. So we've got great load bearing capabilities just here. So let's get this piece lifted up in here and get on with this installation. You've seen me do this already in the studio, I know, but just so you know, it does happen in real life on site as well. 
Working in tight old lofts is never fun. Somehow, I've still got a set of knees. Anyway, here I'm building up what I'd call kind of the inlet manifold. And it took quite a long time to figure out how I was gonna do it to keep it out of the way of the set of steps, but also to make it easily insulatable once we'd finished off the work. And that's what I'm doing here, just getting all my solders done and everything. And it looked a little bit like this, the whole process on the GoPro. Right, so everything's up now. Now, what we've got, we've got our cold main coming in here in 15 mil, bringing it up into our 22. We've got, this is the pressure reading on this side of our cold main. So actually, I should be able to shut this valve here and shut this valve here, and we should be able to just turn this on and get a reading straight away here of what our cold mains in pressure is. This is gonna be high, really high. Look at that, that's near over, over seven bar. Now look on the other side, as we can see there, we've got three bar. That is because as we know, we've got a strainer here, non-return valve there, pressure regulating valve, and then we know that we are set at three bar there. Now, what I could do is let water straight through into the balanced hot and cold system, just like this. There we go, we've got water going in there at the moment. That's great. So what I want to show you is when we open up and start just charging the tank up, look what happens. So look, water is going into the tank at the moment and we'll know when it's finished going in because this gauge here will go up to three bar and this gauge here should go to its static full pressure. So look, let's have a quick look at this all sped up so you can see it filling up. Right then, so there we go. We're pretty much in the full state. As you can see, our inlet main is well over, we're well, getting on for over six bar and our full side is pretty much on the three bar figure there. So that's pretty good. So now we're all ready to pop downstairs and do our pressure test. Just run your hands around here. Make sure you've got no leaks or anything like that. It's all good. Then we can open up our outlet to our hot tank. And look, we've got that drop going on. So great, now the system is fully open, ready to go. You know, one thing I wish I had done was just put a set in there. Meh, maybe one day I'll change that. So let's go downstairs and do a test. Right then, so we're back down here again. This is the proof, isn't it? Even though I'll tell you now, I've already done a little test of like, running the shower, flushing the toilet and seeing if the shower pressure goes down or if the temperature changes, doesn't anymore. Let's turn this on. Now we should now have a static pressure of around three bar because as you know, we're going through our pressure regulating valve. So I should just turn this on and we should get three bar straight away. So just over three bar there. Now let's see what our dynamic pressure is like. Now, remember when we did this earlier, it was at about one bar. In fact, after I'd done the test for a little while, it went down to about half a bar, so not great. So let's just see what that's like. So dynamic pressure test, here we go. <laughs> now, that is a massive improvement. We're, we're hovering there at two bar. Really, really, really pleased with that. That just makes all the difference. I'm gonna tell you what, let's see what happens when I open up the hot. Should we see what happens there as well? Still hovering at two bar. That's really impressive. Oh mate, that's quality. All right, so for a few seconds now, what's gonna be happening upstairs in the loft? That's gonna be replenishing slightly, but really I'm not worried about doing this test right now. Let's see what our flow rate is like. Now this should be, I just said this is gonna be roughly the same as it was earlier. Let's just have a look. Oh right, okay, yeah, 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 all right. Okay, cool. We're sort of roughly pinging away at just about 25 litres, that is a lot of litres. Let's pull these in. Emily's not here right now, but a minute ago I just tested it. I opened up the taps here, and just to see if the kitchen tap would go on like she complained about earlier on in the video, and guess what, it doesn't, so it solved that problem. It solved that horrible little problem of when like the washing machine cuts in and starts drawing water through, the shower that you're under suddenly gets hot or cold while it's trying to balance and all that sort of stuff, because we've now got this extra injection of water stored ready to go and it's not coming through 150 mil pipe it's effectively coming through a 22 millimeter pipe so we've got much better flow and much more dynamic pressure so i hope you've enjoyed today's video i know it's been a bit of a long one but with these sorts of things i like to show you exactly what we're trying to do i like to show you exactly what the product is as well like all these little valves and bits and bobs um, and i like to build things so, so i can prove to you in front of you that what we're doing 
is, is working, that it's happening. And I hope that I demonstrated that with the uh, little tree of valves that I made earlier on in the video. That being said, the byproduct I'd like for this video for younger people, or anyone really, uh, is that they might give them the boost they need to actually enter our fantastic trade. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Bang the subscribe button and all that. Give the old thumbs up, have a little bit of a chit chat in the comments. Come and join us over at my Patreon. There's a beautiful song that they've selected that's just wisping in right now i'm sure you can hear it um where you can come to our ale army live stream every thursday anyway thanks very much for watching and remember to hold tight see you soon Thanks ever so much for watching today's video guys please hit the subscribe button go over to my patreon as well where you'd have seen a sneak peek of this video check out my blog as well i'm going to be uploading some wicked videos about lawnmower soon and i'll see you in next week's video remember to hold tight